Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about database sharding. So sharding is one of the database principle that helps you to scale your um, uh, database in a fastest growing application uh, in terms of performance and storage capacity. Because data is one of the important aspect in any application, especially data driven applications, right? So uh, imagine suddenly your application gets more popular and it got more number of users. The data it got populated will also get increased drastically. And you also might add more features into your application that will also collect large amount of data. So at some point of time, after one year or two years, the, the size of your database is 10 times or 20 times larger than what you have now, right? So now we have to think about the database design. You need to design your database in such a way, uh, exponential growth of the database would not affect your application performance or the storage capacity. So that's where sharding comes into picture. Now imagine you have a database uh, in your application and you have a, a database table to store all your user data. So you might be storing all your username, user page, address, and all the other details associated with the user. So when you start building your application, the number of records in the database table, the user table might be less of like some thousand records or some 10,000 records. So searching uh, for a particular record in a database table contains some thousand or 10,000 records must be faster, right? Your query performance might be very good. But when the database table gets, the, the data in the table gets increased, when your application becomes more popular and it gets more user base, the database table might grow into, it might hold some million records of data or even billion. And that might impact your query performance and also it might impact your storage capacity. So this is where we need to think about how do we design the database in such a way that the large number of data will not affect our application performance. So no matter how large your database grows, the application performance should be consistent, right? So that's where sharding comes into picture. Let's imagine you have a bag full of ties and you have to find a particular tie in that bag. Uh, let's say you have just a 10 number of ties in the bag. So finding a specific tie in that bag must be straightforward and it takes less time to find that, right? But imagine you have a bag full of 1000 ties and now you need to find a specific tie in that bag. It will take more time because you have to search for each and every tie and you need to compare whether it is the tie that is actually you are looking for. Now, how do we solve that? How do we speed up the search process? Now, imagine if you group the ties into multiple bags. Uh, let's say you put all the red color ties into one bag and all the black color ties into another bag and all the different colors into different bags. Then the search would be much faster because once you know the color of the tie that you're looking for, you just need to search only in the bag, in that particular bag. Say if the color you are looking for is red color, then you have to search only in the bag that collects the red color ties. That will narrow down your search and it will fasten your search as well, right? So that's exactly sharding will do. So when you have a large data set, when you have a database table that holds millions or billions of records, now when you apply sharding to that database table, you actually split the database table into smaller chunks and then you distribute the chunks into uh, different database servers. So consider you have a you have a thousand records in this database table, and then you if you want to uh, shard this particular database table, then you the first hundred records will go here in the shard number one, and the second uh, hundred records might go into the shard number two, in an ideal case, right? Just an ideal case, some a subset of data will go into the shard number one, and another subset of will go into the shard number two, and so on. You have to understand one important thing very clearly. There is a difference between replication and partition. When it comes to replication, you actually copy the data into all the database servers. So all the database servers will have the exact same set of data uh, in all the servers. But in case of a partitioning, you are actually keeping a subset of data in each database server. So the data in one shard is actually unique when compared to the other shards. So that's the difference between the replication and the partitioning. In case of sharding, we are actually applying the partition. You are actually splitting this huge table into smaller subsets and you are keeping the smaller subset into each shard. Now, sometimes you can even do the replication as well along with the partitioning. For example, if this particular database table depends on the other support, uh, other tables for some kind of a supporting data, then that supporting tables or the reference tables can be replicated in each shard so that you don't have to do the query across different shards. Right? So th that's how the sharding actually works. Now, one of the other, another most important thing that you need to understand in sharding is on what basis you actually do the sharding. 
So in this example, I simply said that you keep the first 100 records in the shard number one and you keep the second 100 records in the shard number two. But ideally, that's not how it actually works, right? So you basically have to pick an attribute or the column from the table and then the sharding will work on on basis of that particular column. So that's what we call it as shard key. So it is very important to choose the shard key properly before you start implementing the database sharding. Because once you choose a shard key and once you started the sharding process and once the data get accumulated into your shards and then if you want to change the shard key, it will be highly difficult to do that. Uh, it's not an impossible task, but it requires more effort. Like you have to uh, migrate all your data into a different database and then you need to find another shard key, apply the different sharding there. So it's going to take a huge effort. So it is highly important to choose the right shard key. There are two important aspects that you need to consider when you choose a shard key. So one is uh, cardinality, high cardinality, and another one is well-distributed frequency. So these two important factors we need to definitely consider when you choose a shard key. So let's talk about cardinality first. So cardinality actually represents the number of possible values that you will get when you choose a shard key. Say for example, we have a database table that holds the user data. Now, if you want to apply the sharding, you need to first choose the shard key, right? So let's say uh, you want to do the sharding based on the gender column. So you want to do the sharding based on the gender column. Now think about how many possible values you will get if you shard based on the gender column. You will get only two, right? You will have one shard to store all the male users and you will get another shard to store all the female users. Now, now that, that's a very low cardinal uh, shard key, right? But at the same time, uh, think about another shard key. Let's say you want to do the sharding on the user data uh, based on the first character, based on the first character of the username. So this could be another criteria to do the sharding. Let's say you want to shard the database table based on the first character of the username. So who's, uh, the users whose name starts with A will go to the shard number one, and all the users whose name starts with B will go to the shard number two, and so on. Now think about how many possible values you will get if you choose this particular shard. You will get 26 different uh, possible values, and you can have the maximum number of shards you can have is 26, right? So that's a high cardinal shard key. And another thing is frequency. So let's say what is frequency. So frequency actually represents how well your data is actually distributed if you choose a particular shard key. So let's say if you choose the gender as a particular shard key, and if your application has 70% of female, uh, female users and only 30% of male users, think about how the data will be accumulated into the shards. 70% of the data will be accumulated into the shard one, and only 30% of the data will be accumulated into shard two and then your shard one will become a hotspot, right? And then there is no point in doing the sharding because most of the data will get into the shard number one itself. And that's not a very high uh, frequency uh, shard key. Now think about a different shard key. Like if you want to do the sharding on the user table based on the geographical location of the user. And if your application has user who's, who are distributed all across the world, there are different parts of the countries where your users actually live. And now if you want to do the sharding based on the geographical location of the user, then you will have a well-distributed uh, data into, in your shards, right? So that's a well-distributed frequent uh, shard key. So these two concepts are most important when you actually pick a proper shard key for your sharding design. And, I, and I'm sure that in most of the interviews, when people ask you about the database sharding, they would never, uh, definitely expect you to talk about the cardinality and the frequency. So now we talked about uh, what is sharding and how to pick a right shard key, right? So let's talk about some of the drawbacks and advantages of database sharding. So one of the main advantage of the sharding is you will get a high throughput. Uh, so consider when you have a single uh, database server, you have a certain number of input-output operations uh, that you can do in a particular database server. Let's say uh, you have 100 IOPS in this particular database server. But when you do the sharding, just imagine if you have 50 IOPS per each server, the overall uh, input-output operations, the overall throughput of the entire application will increase to a large extent. So that's one of the good things. And another good thing is that database sharding also gives you a high availability. Just imagine in case of a single database server, if this particular server goes down, 
your application cannot serve any data to the users. But in case of database sharding, even if one of the shard goes down, only that particular subset of data is not available, but your application is still up and running, it can still serve the other data to the users. That's one of the good thing as well. But even though there are some advantages, there are few drawbacks for the database sharding as well. Like one of the main drawbacks is database sharding is not a very cost efficient approach. Uh, it requires more cost. Uh, it's, a, it's a very costliest thing to set up when compared to a single database server. And it also comes with a huge maintenance overhead. Because when you have a single database server, applying the patches, updating it must, must be straightforward, right? But when you have multiple sharded database, and especially if it is distributed across the uh, world in different geographical locations, uh, applying the patches and maintaining those database servers is definitely going to be challenged. But even though if there are even though there are some drawbacks for the database sharding, sharding actually becomes one of the default approach for scaling the databases in the fastest growing applications. So in this video, we actually talked about what is sharding and uh, what are the important factors that we need to consider when you pick a shard key and some of the advantages and drawbacks of the sharding. I hope you really find this video useful. Thanks a lot for watching. Audio jungle.